So if we look at the manual a little bit and we go into the fundamental section under chapter three, we can see that there is a section called structure of configuration file. And then inside of here, it gives you a basic template of how your configuration file is supposed to look. At the top, you have the definition of your start soft key, which will call up the start keys here. Underneath that, you have your main file definition or your main page definition. Here you have your load section. You have an unload section. And then each of your pages will get terminated by using the slash slash end. If I go to a template file that I've created or I'm working on buttoning up at the moment, you'll see that in my template, it says case sensitivity doesn't seem to be an issue. The slash slash S is your start identifier. And this uh, area here defines again, the soft key that you're going to use to access the rest of the menus. So anything with the slash slash S and start, this is kind of a key element. The slash slash M again is a jump to a main menu. If we go down through here, we also have slash slash B, which is a jump to a sub program or a sub function within the .com files. And then each slash slash call has its own series of parameters that you can use to define the behavior and functionality of your screen or of that section that you're calling up. You can see at the top here, slash slash M. Inside parentheses, I have main underscore menu. Next to that, I have a title. Next to that, I have a photo. And these are all in double quotes because that is the format for this particular structure. And then there are some empty slash spaces for additional attributes. And then at the very end, we have position X, position Y. Below that, I have a call out section for vertical soft keys and horizontal soft keys. And those are denoted by VS and HS respectively. What this section does is it allows you to give the soft key a name as to what it will display in your uh, vertical and horizontal soft key sections. It also allows you to choose the button state that it's loaded in and also the default user access level. If we go down to section 3.2, we can see the structure of the menu tree. And what this is showing you is that from your start soft key section, when you press a vertical or horizontal soft key, you jump into this menu. This menu can be used to jump into two additional menus or jump into this menu here, which was defined also in the lower horizontal soft key, but can also be accessed through here. This soft key can drop down to this menu. It could go back to this menu. So you can bounce around between the screens because they are interlinked and you can jump to whichever one you want, depending on which horizontal and vertical soft key you have. And then what is defined under your press condition for each key. The reason why I have three .com files is because I found that there was a little bit of a limitation where when I tried to load multiple .com files through the INI file, I personally couldn't figure out how to get multiple soft keys to pop up with multiple .coms in the .ini file. But then I found that you can use multiple soft key calls in the slash slash s start section to jump into different .com files, but I didn't want to have one .com file that had a bunch of page structure underneath it used to jump into other pages. I wanted to have one master file that was dedicated strictly to my main menu soft keys and then sub out to the .com files from there. Because the slash slash s section of the .com file is an optional call. So a little bit about defining soft keys. Section 3.3 .3 
has information on defining start soft keys. The start soft keys are dialog independent soft keys which are not called from a dialog but which have been configured before the first new dialog. So what that means is that if you have a start identifier with slash slash s and then in parentheses start, whenever your software sees this section right here, it will know to call up the soft keys you have defined in that section. So we can see right here, this template.com has slash slash s start hs1 and then in quotes inside of the parentheses menu name, which will define the words that get printed onto the soft key, in this case, horizontal soft key number one. Underneath that is a press element, which says that when you press HS1, LM, which is load main page, will load up a page titled main menu, which means that in this case of template, it looks at this and it finds it right here under the slash slash M. If we look at bottomup.com, we'll see that we don't have the start section at the top because that is handled by the soft key master. So in my case, my start key master says that horizontal soft key 9, 10, and 11 will display probing, test, and angle head. The button actions and user access are optional. There are default settings that are used. So in this case, I don't have any additional attributes. I just have a name for the soft key. But in this case here, I do. When I press horizontal soft key nine, it goes down to this press section for horizontal soft key nine. It loads a menu from bottomup.com called main menu. When I go to bottomup.com, we'll see that I have my slash slash M section here called main menu. And then from there, I have a header called measure bottom up. I have a graphic that gets called up, which is bottom up.png. And next to that, I have a bunch of dimensions for the size and location of that menu. This is what denotes that I'm going to load it into this little section of screen right here. Next to that, I have a system or user variable that I can tie this menu call to. And then after that, I have the graphic position of this bottom up.png. And then if I put another slash here, I could also add additional attributes to the menu. So going back to soft key master, we can see that HS10 will do the, pretty much the same thing. It'll load the menu or load the mask. It'll jump to the calculator section of calculator.com. Because in calculator.com, my slash slash M section is called calculator. So once you get past the start section, your main or mask sections can get named whatever you want and you just link to them inside of the press call with the lm command and the .com file and tell it which slash slash m section to jump to. Each of your menu screens will have soft key definition section it will have a press section for the actions that get taken whenever you press each of the keys that you've defined. You also have a section where you can define both internal and external variables. Internal variables or helper variables as they refer to them as do not have any kind of attribute values. They're just internal variables that you use to assist you with calculations or storing of information that comes in via your input variables or your external variables. Like in the case of down here, I'm storing a variable called output string, which is defined up here. And I'm saying that output string equals, and then in double quotes, the explicit name and memory section of where I want to store this run.spf, which is the program that gets created whenever I run this probing measure bottom up. If I go into my program manager under work pieces, temporary folder, you can see right here, there's that measure bottom up run.spf. 
So there are some sections in the fundamentals that point to permissible positions for start and soft keys. And going back to what I was saying with the slash slash s start section of your .com file, I haven't found this to make much sense to me because I can put horizontal soft keys pretty much anywhere I want depending on where I have them in my HS or VS call. -out. I did find that vertical soft keys are a little trickier to get to work so I just stick with the horizontal but as an example on machine menu here you can actually define three pages of horizontal soft keys so you have page one page two and then page three would pop up as another little white rectangle here if you defined any of these keys as something beyond the scope of the soft keys that were at the bottom of the second page. So if we count these, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On larger resolutions in newer versions of software, you actually have nine. But then when you press the arrow key, you get in this case, 9 through 16. And then you would subsequently get 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. I found that in Program Manager, if you try to define more than two pages, the software will bomb out. So it is pretty subjective to which screen you're loading it into, how many soft key menus you'll get. But one thing that I did find is that there is another subsection under Measure Tool, and I think there may be one under Measure Workpiece, I just can't find the syntax for it. But under Measure Tool, if I had these three soft keys defined, and I had any menu selected other than Measure Tool, I would see the three soft keys. But when I go to Measure Tool, I wouldn't see the soft keys, or I would see them only under the Measure Tool menu which is something that I discovered going through some of the .com files that were created for the uh, Bloom laser measurement system. To show you that, I'll enable this start file, area, machine, and the screen is going to be called SLMA jog ME tool range screen. And that's still going to load softkeymaster.com. You'll see right here I get Probing, test, and angle head under measure tool. Right shift. But if I go to measure workpiece, right shift, you don't see them. If I go TSM, which is completely out of measure workpiece and measure tool, right shift, you don't see them. Measure tool, right shift, there they are. So you're not limited to just the two extra pages of soft keys, you can actually define, at least under measure tool, until I figure out how to do it under measure workpiece, you can define the soft keys that you need here, or you can create a horizontal soft key right here. That would load up another menu and bring you to additional dialogues that you'll need for something. I would like to add it to measure workpiece down here, that way I could call up my custom probing cycles via this instead of having to do it through the MDI menu, like so. But getting back to this, again, there, there's certain things that to me in this manual don't make any sense, but these may be something different other than what they're referring to, because if you do a search for HSK6, It'll bring you down to another table that shows you available sections under like shop mill and things like that. So there, there's something about this that doesn't quite make sense to me, considering the fact that I could put star keys anywhere I want, essentially. There's also this menu attribute that I'm not familiar with as of yet. But it says here, as an example, separate start soft key menus can be defined for horizontal and vertical menus. The menu attribute is used for this purpose. They don't really get too far into how that works, which is something that I did find in this manual over and over and over again, is that they will point to an example of how to do something, 
But that example doesn't work because you have to know what happens around it. So getting into a little bit more on soft keys, the functions for start soft keys are LM and LS. You can also use an exit function or an exit LS function. The LM function is for loading menus or other dialogues. The LS function is used to load soft key menus. So in the case of, let's just say right here, when you press the arrow key at the bottom, it changes the soft key menus on the vertical soft keys. And that is what the LS function will do. It will change soft key menus on the dialog that you're currently looking at. Whereas the LM will load an entirely new menu. This exit function and this exit LS function are internal functions to the system. So when you press a button that's referred to as an exit, it will completely exit out of the easy screens. And the exit LS will exit out of the current screen, but it'll also load a defined soft key menu. So if you want to exit out of, say, this probing dialog, if this exit button were tied to an exit LS section or command, I can have it load different vertical and horizontal soft keys than what you see as a default. In section 3.4, they talk about the logbook, which again is the section called easy screen underscore log dot txt, which is your basic compiler error output. So as you run a screen, if there's an error, it'll show up here. And I can show you that real quick if I go into bottom up and I change this to work, work blah, 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 instead of working dia. If I load that probing screen, if I go back to this log, you'll see that there's an error in a variable. There's an invalid address or toggle array or invalid value. If I go back to notepad plus plus and go back to bottomup.com, if I undo that mistake, save it, exit out of that menu, go back into it, go back to easy screen log text, you'll see that the error message goes away. So that's useful for troubleshooting, but it doesn't really give you an exact error as to what happened. It just kind of gives you a roundabout, hey, you messed up somewhere. You better go and double check your syntax. So I find that make minor changes, save, test, check your log, don't make major changes because you'll find yourself having to undo a million steps before you get to the one that really boogered you up. So do everything incrementally and then save, save, save.